Good morning, friends. It's another busy day up here at Rugged Mountain Homestead. So glad you came by to join us. We're going to head down to the garden this morning and go ahead and take the next steps on to remediating that soil. So let's go. Now, before we get started here, there is just one thing I have to point out and it, it is so special to me every time I come down here. It certainly helps things. I had planned when doing the garden and laying it out and everything that I was going to have a field of sunflowers over top of the area next to um, the gardens. Well, time ran out and got busy with other things and I didn't get all those sunflowers planted. It generally takes 75 days for sunflowers to come to maturity and so I really didn't want to plant all of them and waste any seed. So I felt kind of sad about that too. Um, but you know what? During all my sadness and upset, I started looking out over this field and look here. and even farther down. I don't know if you can see that too well, but it kind of starts at the tree right there and just keeps going down. With all sunflowers. Now I know that I've said that sunflowers are my favorite flower, and they are. Uh, sunflowers and roses, any kind of sunflowers and roses. And um, just made my heart really happy. This is such, this was such a blessing. And I know that, you know, sunflowers grow wild here and so it may not seem significant to some, but this was extremely significant to me. Now, as you can see behind me, I have taken everything out of this five by 24 bed. And so all the plants have been taken out and the, also the top layer of wood chips, they are gone as well. Now this bed just looks like it did when it was originally filled with soil and now as you can see behind me in this cart i have a black contractor's trash bag and that is where i put all of the wood chips i had another bag for the plants that were ripped up and so those are just all the wood chips and any little bits that were left behind. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the garden and broadcast some gypsum pearls. And I've chosen gypsum because it is really good for clay soil. This is clay soil. Um, that's all we have around here for the most part. It'll break it up. It'll... Um, put some nutrients in there, and it's also considered organic matter. So that's gonna help as well. So I have a 20 pound bag. That's gonna be good for a thousand square feet. This garden is 600 square feet, so that's great. I'll have plenty. And I have a 20 pound bag that I got from Azure for $13 and change. So that's another thing that I was happy about. So let's go ahead and get this soil amendment down. I'm going to go ahead and broadcast it, meaning I'm just going to take a handful and throw it out on top of the soil here. And then I will go ahead and water it in. Okay, so before I begin broadcasting the gypsum, I forgot to mention that I've got to get in here and turn the soil first. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and take this rake here and get started with that. Now that I've raked up the garden bed, I did it the length of the bed on both sides and I did it the width. And then I turned all the topsoil over. Um, so then that way it's just, it's not just raked into a pile. Um, so now we're going to go ahead and broadcast the gypsum and get it watered in. Okay, now that the gypsum has been watered in, um, the next step will be to put the cover crop down that I got at the co-op so that it can bring up the toxins out of the soil and prayerfully, this time next year, we'll be able to grow in it. Um, we'll just have to see. But I wanted to take this moment to address a question I, I received. And uh, it was a good question. And someone had asked us why we didn't just grow in the soil that we have here on our land. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, we know it's kind of ironic because we weren't sure how this, how good this soil was going to be. We were out here last summer. The cabin was being built. We were living in here in our trailer. Um, and it just seems so barren and compacted and... Well, it is. It's a lot of clay. But first of all, the top layer, which has been sitting here and is all silt, very, very fine, way finer than sand. And it's deep in some places, you know, six inches maybe. And it's all over the place. And then when the rain comes, it kind of settles it in and, and makes it hard. So, uh... It is a lot of clay, when I say a clay consistency, when you wet it, and they don't get a lot of rain up here, but when you do it, really, mm -hmm. really gets hard. So the first top layer, when they were digging the foundation, we were digging for the um, garden beds or anything else, um, was hard, it wasn't rocky, but it was- Compacted. Very, very compacted, and also, uh, if there were stones, if you will, like, like sandstones, basically sand, very hard. You could break it, but it was really tough. And so as they were doing the foundation, they thought sure that they would hit rock. So um, they did dig down. They did not hit it, but they did hit a lot of sandstone. And so where there may be layers of decent soil, it's really not dig down. You didn't know where it was. Yeah. And it's, but now that we've been here, and we've been here through that season and now we're into summer and we can kind of look around and see where things are growing very thickly. And we do have those places and one of those places where all the wild sunflowers are, um, I had no idea. It was so barren last year from us putting the septic in that I didn't think anything was really gonna grow on top of it. It was like really, really, it just looked like dirt. And so now seeing that hindsight, I probably could have done a no dig bed. Um, but you can't put pressure on it. You can't drive over the top of it. You no. can't go too deep over it. But lo and behold, a septic field that actually has <laughs> growth. Well, no, but I mean, like we have, I, I didn't explain that right. Because where we have the berms now, um, I could have made a raised bed in that area, I guess. Um, you know, we'll just have to see how it goes. I guess I'm thinking in hindsight a lot because of how disappointed I am this year, but I'm not gonna keep going on and on about that. But out here, it's mo so much easier to just say, make three organized or one or two or whatever. Organized raised beds out here is probably the best way to go. Well, it's hugel culture from our property, from trees that were down for the cabin build and then it was purchased soil and we used um, wood chips that were around here from us chipping up the wood. So we'll just go together on this and that is why we did not grow in ground here. Plus this ground, it was completely raw land, completely raw land, nothing was here. And we really didn't know um, 
how this soil was. If it had, if it had been completely stripped of nutrients, we just, we didn't know um, because it was very wooded. Um, in this, this area where we've built the cabin, um, you know, it had a small area, but we still had to take a lot of trees down. Anyway, that is our answer for why we did not do an in-ground garden here. Um, but we also wanted to take a moment to thank everyone because Rugged Mountain Homestead, we hit a milestone. And with YouTube, we have 500 subscribers now. So we thank each and every one of you for joining us along on this homesteading journey. It's, it's exciting and we're so happy to be able to share this life with each and every one of you. So hopefully as a, <clears throat> as a teaser, at some point I will get to making some videos, <laughs> um, probably more with stills. I've taken a lot of stills as I've been building things and doing things, not video because I just haven't had the time to do both. Uh, nor edit. Um, so hopefully something will be coming there. And the reason I look the way I do is, while she's been dealing with the garden, I've been doing fire mitigation. We have a, it's very, very dry, very dry. And uh, a lot of down trees and branches and very old growth. Um, and so I've been using a chainsaw and cutting things up, stacking logs that we can use for firewood in the winter and chipping some other things and then literally removing, getting it way out off of uh, the the area around the house. Um, just You're doing to, an awesome job. It looks really great. Well, thank you. It doesn't look awesome yet. It looks kind of ugly, well, but <laughs> at least to the logs, the, the all the all the big stuff is, compared is mostly to what it gone. Did, compared to uh, what it yeah, did. Yeah, but we've got a lot of bark and a lot of chips and a lot of stuff like that. We just want to get it away from the house. Um, so that's what I've been up to. Yeah. Plus, our monsoon season is late due to the weird weather patterns. Anyway. All right. Well, we thank each and every one of you. Thank you for um, joining us on this homestead journey. And until the next time, take care. Bye-bye.